What's going on you guys? Pet Platypus here and it's time to talk about Dragon Ball Super episode 83. Sorry I didn't get this review out, uh, you know, yesterday. I tried recording the video and I kept splintering off into tangents and it just would have been a, a terrible review. You know what you're thinking, how hard is it to review an episode of Dragon Ball Super? Not very, but since this episode really doesn't have a lot to talk about, I kept, like, splintering off into things like, you know, oh, fucking... Somehow I worked my way into ranting about fucking the Super Saiyan God being brought back in the manga again, which is... If you want to see a separate video about me criticizing that... Just tell me in the comment section below and I'll make it, but, uh, you know, I might just make it for the fuck of it, but let me know if you guys actually want to see it and then I'll be more encouraged to make it. So yeah, let me know about that. But yeah, I got into talking about that. I think I made a joke about Vegeta going in and out of Super Saiyan Blue and by manga logic he'd only have 10% power and then now the manga is completely contradicting that and I made a joke about that and that's what caused that little mini rant to happen. So let's keep it focused on this episode, though I have to mention last episode... Dog Beerus. Like, I, I have to mention Dog Beerus real quick, because I wasn't paying attention, really, uh, to the end of the episode. I knew the art quality dropped a bit, and then I found out it was fucking Katano who supervised it, so no shit. Uh, but yeah, Dog Beerus, incredible. I've already seen recolors of, like, Scooby-Doo and shit. It's great. Uh, but anyways, now to talk about this episode. This was a cooldown episode. We had basically four weeks of fighting. Uh, it was like, fight, fight, fight. Women's Marathon, then fight, because you know, we had the week off for the Women's Marathon, but that's still a lot of fighting, like almost back to back, so it's fine to have a cooldown episode. That being said, it was a bit slow, not a lot going on, you know, Trunks trying to like, oh, do I want a brother or a sister, because I can train with a brother, but not a sister, which is kind of fucking sexist, but whatever. Um, it's, he's a kid, so I don't care. Or he's not really a kid, he's like a teenager, but still, or like a young, like 13, what are they supposed to be right now? I don't know. They're like Shoutsu at this point. I don't know if these guys are going to get bigger until like a major time skip happens, but we'll have to wait and see. But I digress. See, I already, I already fucking went off on a little mini thing right there because there's so little to talk about outside of the big points in the episode. The big points are the baby being born, Vegeta character development, or not really character development, but just the results of character development, and deciding who they want on the team. Those are like the three big things in this episode. Everything else is kind of just fluff, you know, everyone holding the baby, it crying, Vegeta getting mad when the baby cries because he's fucking, def fucking protective. You know, it's Vegeta, as always, overcompensating for most likely a lot of guilt for with what happened with Trunks and how Trunks' childhood went. Uh, not that he was, you know, he was there technically when Trunks was growing up, but he wasn't, you know, he trained with him, beat him up a little bit, kind of, said he'd take him to amusement park, never did until his fucking Dragon Ball Super, so like six months later. Um, you know, never held him as a baby, treated him like shit as a baby, treated his mom like shit as a baby. Horrible dad. Really annoying that people say, even in Z, that he's a better dad than Goku. It's retarded. Um, but yeah, in Super, he's a lot better. It's, it shows a lot of character development, and I think a lot of it does stem from overcompensating for, you know, what happened back then. You know, not being there for Bulma when Trunks was born and not being there for Trunks just period when he was a baby, and when even when he was there, he really kind of wasn't, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. But, you know, they don't, you know, Vegeta doesn't outright say that, but I feel like that's a part of it, as well as just being a better person in general and more human than he used to be. So just, you know, generally, generally caring about the baby as well is a part of it too, not just guilt. But I think the fact that he specifically said that he never held Trunks when he was a baby and, uh, or never held him in general, and he was so eager to hold Bra, like, he was standoffish about it, but once it was offered to him, he just did it really quickly. That, I think, is definitely comes from the Boo Saga, definitely comes from that moment, but, uh, that's really cool. This episode had a lot of heart to it, so that helps out with the slow pacing. It was a really fun episode with good jokes here and there. And then we got the, uh, tournament, uh, the tournament stuff, figuring out who's gonna be on the team. You know, they mentioned Krillin, they mentioned 18, 17, Roshi, because he has experience. They explained that Goten and Trunks are inexperienced and not good with the strategies required to do this. Uh, to do this kind of tournament with throwing people out of the ring, not just beating them up. I mean, of course, you could knock them out and then throw them out of the ring. But still, Roshi has more experience. He can probably coach during the matches. He has a lot of tricky techniques. Roshi makes sense. If he's fighting people around his power, his experience will definitely prevail unless they have the same level of experience. Which isn't super common, I don't think, because Roshi is, like, what, like, over 300 at least? So, yeah. And then they want to test Krillin's strength, which is kind of weird, because they want to make sure Krillin's up to snuff, so they do the image training. 
But with Roshi, they're just like, oh yeah, let's just put in Roshi. It's like, wait, what? Like, are you not going to image train Roshi against one of these guys? Because that's that's a little weird. I just thought of that right now. But yeah, the image train, uh, the image train Krillin versus Basil, and it's Futoshi Higashide just slaying it because he's not fucking human. Um, it's conservative animation, but still, he fucking inhuman motherfucker can just animate just week after week doing like above average scenes. It's just crazy, but. He puts together that fight scene, and it's actually really cool seeing Krillin, even though it's image training, it's really cool seeing Krillin throughout his whole arsenal against Basil, and actually hold his own, just not power-wise. He can't damage Basil, like, he lands a bunch of attacks, and they don't do anything to him. Uh, but then Goku says that Krillin has been training, and we know that there's been a nine-month time skip. I'm not saying Krillin's gonna be crazy strong now, but still, he is definitely stronger than what Gohan would have imagined in the image training, so... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next week. Uh, Gohan and Krillin sparring. I will say, though, Gohan had a little sweat beat, and I'm like, eh, like, I know Krillin, I want Krillin to be strong, don't get me wrong, but I want it to make sense, because Gohan's really fucking strong compared to Krillin. And even in base, to have like a little sweat beat while fighting Krillin, I don't know, that's, that's a little iffy. But, I mean, Krillin could have been working his ass off. We've seen him grow in power exponentially over the course of, like, a year of training and shit. You know, he... Krillin can train and get strong fast. He's a lot... Got a lot more potential in him than even he really uh, knows of. So, yeah. And especially since Krillin has gotten over that whole self-doubt thing, or at least has gotten over more... Hey, he's overcome it more so than before uh, with the recent uh, little mini-arc. I definitely think he'll be a lot stronger. So... I don't know if he's made Gohan sweat strong yet. That might not make sense. We'll have to wait and see how the episode plays out. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I can definitely see him getting significantly stronger than he was before, which got, has me excited because Krillin is one of my favorite characters. And that's pretty much the episode. Uh, they didn't mention TN, but obviously we know he will be a part of the tournament at some point. Also Yamcha, so... So, like, dude, Toei just hates Yamcha, dude. Like, when the baby... When he holds the baby and fucking... <laughs> the baby cries... And when fucking, uh, he's like, oh yeah, I'll just fucking, I'll show up, or I'll just wait at home, and they'll come and recruit me, because I'm fucking Yamcha, and obviously they aren't even gonna go see him at all. So great, uh, so fucking great, like, the comedy's on point there. Not his dream sequence, that was kind of stupid, but just him being like, oh yeah, they'll come get me, I'm fucking Yamcha, don't worry guys, I'm here, fucking Team Four Star reference, fucking, was that... Was that the Kai abridged episode or the original? I forget. But anyways, I think it was fucking, I think it was the Kai abridged episode. Would you have, if you haven't seen Dragon Ball Z Kai abridged by Team Four Star, they're hilarious. Um, but anyways, I mean, I guess that goes without saying since Team Four Star is hilarious in general, but still, those are funny. I do recommend them. Uh, but yeah, that, that scene with Yamcha was funny. Toei does not like Yamcha. That's very, very humorous. But yeah, that's pretty much the episode. Goku's going to go recruit Krillin. And then we got next week with Gohan sparring with Krillin to see how strong he is. And uh, I'm definitely excited. Definitely want to see how all that's going to go down. Uh, it looks like Yoshitaka Yoshima supervising that episode based on the art style in one little scene. Hard to really say, but it looked good for an episode by him. He usually solos episodes, but he'll probably have a couple of second, uh, second key animators cleaning stuff up. Uh, some of that fighting will probably be Futoshi Higashide because he animates on fucking everything. <laughs> So, you know, it'll, it'll probably be an okay-looking episode on the conservative side, which makes sense. You want episodes like this, because this episode had a pretty, pretty small team, too, uh, outside of, you know, outsourcing, like, fucking Toy Animation Philippines and stuff. Uh, it was a small in-house team for this episode, most likely a small in-house team for the next episode. Really smart to do that for the non-essential episodes where fighting can just kind of be, like, conservative, little sparring here and there, uh, you know, a lot of talking. And then when the actual tournament gets going... That's when your Yuichi Karasawa's, if he's still working on the series, can show up. That's when your uh, Shiricho Manabe, or I probably butchered his first name, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, Naotoshi Shida, Naoki Tate, all the top tier dudes from the series, that's when they can all shine. So yeah, I'm, not, I'm fine with it being a Shima episode. We'll see how the animation goes, but the preview looked fine, so we'll just have to wait and see. That's pretty much my review. Uh, still some tangents in there. Uh, like Krillin and talking about his self-doubt and like his power level and everything. Still some stuff in there because there really isn't a lot to say about this episode. My only criticisms of it are uh, slow pacing and 
it could have been a little bit more funny or a little bit more interesting that added to the slow pacing. It's really just pacing, honestly. That's really the big issue. Music was well done. Animation was for fine for what it needed to be, really. They reused the baby fucking smiling a lot, but that's really not that big of a deal. Uh, so, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a fine episode of Dragon Ball Super, like a 7 out of 10. Uh, I like seeing them try to get the team figured out. Though that Roshi thing is kind of weird. Like, if you're going to test Krillin against Basil, why would you not test Roshi? Because, you know, whatever. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much all I have to say. What do you guys think of this episode of Dragon Ball Super? Go ahead and tell me in the comment section below. Do you want to see me talk about the Dragon Ball Super manga in general? Or just the Super Saiyan Red stuff, I guess? Uh, go ahead and tell me also in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. Both those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. Click that little bell to get notifications when my videos go up. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.